Hello, I'm Jijo, and in this particular video, I'm going to look at the overview of the CAT 2023 slot number three, verbal ability and reading comprehension section. So when I'm recording this particular video, the response sheet has come out. The percentile is not at out. Uh, so this overview is not about score versus percentile and things like that, but a deep dive into what was the kind of questions asked. So let's get started. Let's look at reading comprehension first. So I have this uh, data that I'm going to press in. But before we start, I just want to explain this one term. What is this density grade? There are a lot of formula that is used, a lot of way in which you can calculate uh, how dense a particular passage is or a text is. This basically uses, all, almost all the formula uses these two criteria. Uh, one is the number of words that are there in a particular sentence on an average. Obviously, long, long in the words in a particular sentence, long sentences make it dense. And also... How many syllables are there in the words? Longer the words also makes it very, very dense. This, of course, doesn't look at the vocabulary used or the topic here that is used. It's one of the factors. So this particular density grade that I've used uh, is a flesh Kincaid grade level. Kincaid grade level. Uh, if, you, if you're interested, you can check uh, Google and find out what the formula that is used. Basically, they put a grade. Now, uh, to understand the grade, what does 10 mean? 10 means somebody has done 10 standard, clear 10 standard, should be able to read and understand. What is recommended usually is uh, to keep it around 10 so that public can understand. Anything above 13 is considered to be dense. Not that it makes it automatically difficult to read, but it's, it's generally dense. So what do you actually see in the four passages? 14.9, that is dense. Another 14.9, that's also dense. The third passage was 16.6. That is really dense. And the last passage is 11.9, which is reasonably dense. So one of the things that the CAT did do uh, in 2023, at least in slot number three, is to give you passages that are a little dense. Okay, what else? Let's look at the number of words, word length. It's about 500 words. There's one which is 531 and 511 words. If you actually look at the CAT passages from 2017 onwards till now, Almost all the passages are about, in fact, every single passage is about 500 words. The cat has stuck to it. Now, if you're watching this particular video and planning to take the cat in 2024, then you can expect in 2024 as well, the passage length to be around 500 words. What are the kind of topics? Uh, so one was on cultural heritage. That's a genre. It was archaeology paradox. They basically uh, use the same topic of the article. Uh, other was one psychology about rational thinking, especially about uh, Steven uh, Pinker's perspective, the book that he has written, and the author is trying to do some kind of review about the book, talks about certain positives and also talks about certain limitations of that book. The third is well, philosophy, romantic aesthetics is probably one of the passage where many people found it difficult to comprehend. And the last one is about, uh, uh, about environmental crisis origins. But John, you can call it environmental humanities. Uh, that sort of uh, sub sub discipline is what you can call call it. So one one thing that is fine find is that it is from uh, sort of diverse areas, right? So what you expect in CAD. But now look at the source. Uh, now before I just uh, talk about the source, one other thing I want to understand. Let's uh, kind of understand the a possible about five different types of sources the CAD can use, and CAD is uh, used in the past. One is uh, articles uh, from, uh, let's say, uh, newspaper articles, or, or I will not say newspaper articles, newspaper websites, um, or, or news website, Guardian, BBC, Los Angeles Times, Washington Post. So typically what you find here is, of course, whatever the article that is written here, it is for the consumption of general public. Uh, so in general, you would see that these articles would be slightly more easier to understand, easier to comprehend, because obviously the writer is writing, knows that the, uh, the people who are consuming this particular article would be people who are like you and me. And then you will find essays. Uh, a typical example of this, you can, you can probably look at uh, Aon essays could be sort of one um, example. So this is articles on uh, the, the, the topics uh, which are normally not found. Uh, in, uh, in um, normally not accessible to general public, but these kind of essays is kind of makes it accessible. So the topic that is being discussed would be complex topic, but consumed by 
or whoever is interested in the topic may be public. So the obviously this is going to have a slightly more uh, in depth uh, than probably an article. So the third could be what they they could probably pick it from uh, an encyclopedia. Encyclopedia where a lot of yarn is given. A cat normally picks up an encyclopedia can one that is picked in encyclopedia philosophy. Uh, so this is uh, it depends depending upon what is the encyclopedia for. Is it for general public or is it for some scholars? Depends. And then they can even pick from journal entries. Journal entries, but who, who writes a journal does not write the journal for the general public, it's for the peers. So this is, therefore, the author is going to assume that people reading the journal will understand the topic. So this usually tends and cat has picked up a lot of journal in the past. And the last I would say is books. The book depends, depend upon what the, what kind of book is this. So you can find a lot, many book as well, fiction. Obviously, most of the, most of the thing would be uh, not fiction, non-fiction books is uh, typically what is being used. So you've seen in the past cat, uh, picking up articles from a diverse sort of source. But what we'll find here is that there were three sources here, this, this, and this, uh, which is the Los Angeles Times, the Washington Post, the Wire Science. These are all articles. So that is probably one of the reasons as to why people generally felt that the passages were uh, sort of not that painful as the previous years. Uh, so that's probably one of the things that people would have found. Basically, I found this particular passage in multiple uh, this is sort of entries. So I, I picked from one. I, it was also there in some other websites. Uh, I don't. So I, I just picked one source. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, these are all passages written. Even though it is kind of dense, uh, the way in which it is obviously written is for the consumption of general public, right? The one, the, this one was Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. I mean, I uh, sometimes create content for uh, reading comprehension. Um, the, the the course that I run, for example, the VRC one thousand course, I actually give people my students read articles. Um, I create test there as well. I have picked up quite a lot of articles from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. This is the first time the cat has picked from that source. Okay, that's it's good to see, but at least for me, but definitely not for the students. But it's like this, this uh, almost all the article is you, 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 this is just namesake encyclopedia. This is for gen, not for general public. Uh, this is much more for people who are uh, who want to research on philosophy. Uh, it's 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 kind of for very scholarly articles. So therefore, naturally, many people would have found this particular passage slightly difficult to read. So, but. Uh, to be fair to the uh, uh, the question creators, they picked up quite a lot of articles, uh, uh, which is which is something that uh, uh, you see in this this particular cat, uh, cat at least this particular slot. Uh, the, this is the sort of difference that we found from the previous uh, cat of 2020 or 2021 or 2022. In 2023, you had more number of articles. Now well, let's go to the questions here. The, I, I've categorized into three. A lot of people can categorize the questions in a multiple different way. Uh, to make it very simple, I basically categorized into three. The global question are the question which is basically asking the main idea, the purpose, the keywords. This is absolutely missing. Usually when you have, in the previous years, if you look at the last couple of years, you typically see a question which says, which of the following is a keyword sequence of uh, the passage. So the broad idea is kind of missing. Detail is a kind of stuff which is fact-based questions is what normally people uh, ask them. There are quite a lot of them. In fact, you've got three, six, seven, eight, uh, which is half of them was detail-based and half of them inference-based. Inference is a very loose term here. Uh, within itself, there could be a question which is asking which of the following can be inferred from the passage. Uh, there could be a question which of the following, if true, would uh, strengthen the argument or weaken the argument, assumptions, what is the author likely going to agree with, disagree with, or the author, you, there's one sentence, uh, can you interpret this particular sentence? Or maybe this particular example is given, why was this example given? All that is very loose term to the inferences. So again, you see that uh, that is uh, this half and half, that's what you find in this particular paper. One of the things that many, uh, this particular paper also had is that these questions, whether it is deep, detailed inference, uh, I'm, I'm going to call it either the question can be closed or question can be open in the sense. Okay, let me explain what I mean by this. The, the, the it's a 500 word passage, maybe about five to six paragraph. Uh, one uh, particular question can specifically address a, w one s a specific element of a pa particular passage. It doesn't capture. It is asking sort of very closed question. That's what I'm going to ask as a very closed question. Something that is very very specific to something. 
in some of the cases, if this was not the sort of the key idea, you cannot remember, of course, when you read the passage, you don't remember everything. You will probably uh, would uh, uh, understand the key idea. Sometimes in this question, you probably will have to go back to the passage. So it is one of those things, I think this year, um, uh, at least in 2023, slot number three, there would have been cases where many students had to go back to the passage to check that specific element being asked. The open questions are questions like each of the following can be inferred from the passage except it's sort of from everywhere, right? Uh, so, uh, but many of the questions were much more close than open ones. Uh, very, very sort of specific, narrow questions were asked. So that would have probably given a challenge. So if at all, if you look at the uh, reading comprehensive passages of slot number three of CAT 2022, the challenge may not be so much with respect to interpretation of these particular passages. The challenge would have been to navigate the question, of course, the options. I'm not, uh, at the end of the day, the game is in options. How is the option is created? Uh, how the, uh, the question setter is trying to create some wrong option, which is very appealing, trying to trap students into marking those options. So that is probably one of the challenges that would have happened with respect to the passages. When we move on to the verbal ability uh, questions, uh, the, the cat asked all type of questions that has been asked in the last sort of five, six years. We have got sentence placement. Some people call it paragraph completion. Uh, we know it. There's a question where a particular sentence is given, a particular paragraph is given, obviously with, uh, so this paragraph is given with a few blanks, blank one, blank two, blank three, blank four, between sentences. You have to basically look at these sentences will fit where in the particular passage. So we had two of them. One was again, taken from the Stanford Encyclopedia Philosophy. For some reason, this question center really liked Stanford Encyclopedia Philosophy. And the second was taken from a UN report. Uh, this was the sentence placement uh, story. Then you had odd sentence in a paragraph. It was not asked last year. It used to be there before that, uh, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. In CAT 2022, they, instead of asking odd sentence question, asked a sentence placement question. This was introduced last year. That has been continued, but this particular CAT got back the odd sentence question as well, where you're given five sentences uh, and you have to basically identify one of those sentences which is not part of the particular paragraph. So given the fact that in CAT uh, 2022, this question was not asked and suddenly it came in 2023, many of the students who prepared for CAT 2023 might have not really prepared for odd sentences, could have, might have, right? But these two, this, again, but the good thing was this was from BBC and The Guardian, again, article, not not so much of a problem uh, to uh, handle the, the, those two questions. Then we had paragraph jumble. One was uh, from the BBC, other was from a, sort of a paper. Uh, so ran the paper, that's, that's the second uh, the one. And the paragraph summary was picked from Guardian Economist. Again, a lot of articles coming in. So, so you see articles, articles, article, 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 quite a lot of articles again, which means most of them are written for the consumption of general public. So your challenge may not be too much. Uh, the challenge is in this particular CAT, uh, 2023 slot number three was not about uh, comprehension, interpretation. It's, I think, I believe it's largely about navigating the options or at least options in paragraph summary, or again, jumbling these things. I mean, those would be the challenges that people would have faced. And that is basically an overview of the CAT 2023 slot number three. I will be recording videos, uh, solution to each of these particular passages and all these questions. You can watch them and learn from them. I think, uh, yep. So I'll see you soon. Cat 2023, slot number three. This is a passage on romantic aesthetics. This passage had 531 words, slightly more to read. The go, oh, our dense level is too much. It is from one of the, I will not say crazy, encyclopedia, but obviously not for you and me. If you are studying philosophy, if you are the, uh, uh, studying philosophy and doing some masters or PhD level philosophy stuff, and then this is a good site to refer to. Otherwise, normal human being hardly refer to this site known as the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. By the way, I have created a lot of passages uh, in my days for the reading comprehension, various mocks and stuff. And I've used quite a few times the passages from here. Yes, I've used that. So this is as uh, something that is not alien to me personally, but I'm sure that this would be very alien to most of the students. And the areas philosophy, there is three detailed question and one interpretation question. Now, I'm going to talk about something before I start. 
according to the solution. There is an advice that most people give is that what you got to do is that there are these 24 questions in the VRC section of the CAT with eight BA questions and four passages, passage one, passage two, passage three, passage four, three, the four questions each in each of the passages. What you got to do, this is advice that is given by many. What you got to do now, you have to select passages to solve. Take now one passage which is very difficult. So you have to first go through the passage and systematically select the passage so that you can solve three passages and do one question and, and eight questions and probably, probably leave out one passage completely. And this advice that is given from the beginning of preparation. So as a student, you're predisposed to this idea. That I should not be solving every single question. So every preparation that we do, we have accepted that reality. So my oka to hai to solve all the 24 questions or evaluate all the passages. And then we practice like that, practice like that, practice like that. Every single mock that we take, we only look at this. We never think about the idea that is it possible? Maybe I, I'm preparing for, let's say, six months. I'm preparing for eight months. At this point in time, yes, it is difficult for me to look at all the 24 questions. So it's possible. That I, I, I have this attitude that I want to solve as many questions as possible. I will not have any pre, uh, preconceived notion of the number of questions I'll attempt, number of passages that I'll attempt. I'll attempt as many as I can. And let me try and improve this. Instead of that, we get stuck to some idea. There are people who would say that, look, it is impossible for me. I take about 15 minutes to read a particular passage. Sir, therefore, I can only solve two passages. So this is some thought that I've heard. I take 15 minutes. Conclusion, therefore, I can only solve two passages. What in reality is not this. The reality is the exact opposite. Because you have decided you will solve only two passages. You have made the decision. You will solve only two passages. Now you want to ensure that out of the eight questions, you have rejected or, or, or eight questions straight away. You have told yourself that I will solve only two passages. Therefore, now you want to get all these eight questions correct. So you'll read the passage once, twice. You'll you'll you will get stuck in every question. You but you will fight through, and therefore you spend fifteen minutes per passage. This is the reality. I think that this sort of advice that is being going through, saying that you have to basically decide on a particular strategy and then work towards it, and then you are you are tuning yourself to that rigid sort of scenario instead of allowing yourself to be a little free and say that look, I will solve as many as I can. If I can solve all 24, I'll do it. If, I, it's, if it's 20, it's 20. If I can do all passages, then it's great. If I can solve only three passages, then it's fine. But at the end of the day, my attitude is to solve as many questions as possible because I want to showcase one reality. There are two elements, right? There's a passage with the question set as taken and then created question and also options. What makes actually a passage difficult when it comes to reading comprehension, yes, passage may be challenging to maybe may situation the passage may be hard to read, or passage may be okay to read. Fair enough. There is if you, if you can understand the passage, it's better. In some cases, it is hard to read, right? But the game is here, not even just the question. Some people worry about inference question, this question, but who cares? Whatever be the question, the answer is there in the passage, whether it's inference or otherwise. Answer to hey, oh, passage man. At the end of the day, the game is here in options. I can have easy options in the sense that it's very easy to discern the correct answer. And I may have hard options. Now look at these four scenarios. This is a scenario that we love. The passage is easy to read. Options are easy to read. We are fine. We are good with this. And this is also a scenario, even though it sounds crazy, but this is also a scenario which is very manageable. Imagine, I see a very hard passage. <laughs> and options are very hard. It's very natural for me to say, I'm going to skip it. It's very easy to, easy thing to do. The problem happens in these two cases. What if... The passage is very okay to read. And the options are hard. This is where amazing amount of speed breaker happen. We get stuck in this particular path. We choose to get stuck. We go do this because we have read the passage. We have understood the passage. Therefore, for some reason, we'll tell ourselves that we want to handle even the hardest option. Obviously, you'll never get to know what how to this is about our understanding so this is basically about very personal in the sense of you're you're finding the options hard right if if that happens then this is the most dangerous situation what we eventually miss out on with this attitude that i will not deal with hard passage at all the attitude is here the options being easy uh, even though the passage is somehow being hard and the smart ones are the ones who will navigate these ones 
the way in which you should look at reading comprehension is not based on passage at all. It has to be based on question, not even question, based on option. Therefore, you will never know in the initial case, just by going through passage or reading the question, how hard really a question is. You'll only come to know after reading the passage when you start evaluating the option. So all the decision about whether to solve a question or leave a question cannot start cannot start with looking at the passage. Has to happen after reading the passage, evaluating the question. So which means, even if there are, there are four questions, let's, let's uh, uh, imagine a situation that the passage is easy to read. Let's, let, let's look at another one. This particular passage is hard to read. It's a, a, a four questions. But there could be a case where here, one option is sort of easy to navigate. Other op There are two options which is hard to navigate. One option uh, is easy to navigate. Here, uh, three options uh, are three questions. Options are easy to navigate. Only one is hard to navigate. How should you decide? So obviously, what is going to happen is if you decide purely solely on the base of this particular passage, you will ignore this one completely. And what then? What is going to happen is that you're going to get stuck in these two questions. And before you know it, even though you have spent about, let's say, four minutes doing this particular passage, let's assume that you navigate the, these two questions in about one, one and a half minutes because it was easy to discern. Uh, one minute, one and a half minutes, let's say, even I, let's say two minutes. But you end up spending extra two, 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 two minutes, three minutes because you're going back to the passage and stuff. Before you know it, you have spent about six minutes here, five, four to six minutes here. And then at the end of the day, already it has gone to about 10 to 12 minutes. Right. So that's what happened. And then what 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 typically is going to happen? You will get uh, to, to, uh, let's say two questions correct, six marks, and and you take out uh, two out. Your net you are with about four marks. After all this that has happened, spending about ten to twelve minutes, you take away four marks. And imagine this scenario, where you are agnostic to the passage. You are saying that whatever is the passage which is hard or easy, I'm going to just uh, try and understand the key. Uh, topics, key idea. I may not understand 100% of the stuff, but what I'll try and do is understand as much as possible what the passage is trying to tell us. Yeah, overall story, the key uh, elements of this particular passage. Let me just remove all these things from here and talk about a very similar scenario. I'm agnostic to it. I'm going to read or uh, solve all this. Okay, I saw this question. I got confused here. I, let's say, left this question out. Here, let's say I, I put a bet. I put a bet on this. I navigate this. I went here, read the passage. Maybe this particular passage took me, let's say, four minutes to read. Uh, this is about a, these two questions. I navigate in about 30, 45 seconds. Another, this, these two put together. I spent about a minute time here, a minute time here. This, I quickly left the question after about 30 seconds because it was very confusing. Here, after a minute, uh, I kind of bet on something. Four, five, six, seven, seven and a half minutes. I, I, I've gone out, moved this particular passage. Unfortunately, this particular passage took me a little time to read about six minutes because it was slightly hard. I had to comprehend. But these three questions happened very quickly because it took only two minutes together. I just left this question because it's confusing. This all put to the ram about eight minutes. So in this about 14, 15 minutes, what has essentially hap happened to me? It, uh, 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 so, so about, about uh, 16, 15, 15 and a half minutes, and around 15 minutes, I have navigated one, two, three, four, five questions. And let's say that I got one question wrong. Five threes are 15, 15 minus one is 14 marks is what I took out from this particular scenario than the overall scenario. So if you are someone who's planning to take the cat in 2024, and you're just starting your preparation. Never start by making an assumption about your abilities. Never start by saying that I'm going to have a preconceived notion. I think the key thing is we never know what the cat is going to be. We never know what is the exact level of difficulty of the passage or the questions. So to have a very open mind is very important. And that is being illustrated sort of in this particular passage. And I'm sure that a lot of you would have struggled for example, if you go through this passage and read the passage, but let's read the passage and understand what the passage is trying to say. Understanding romantic aesthetics. First of all, the word uh, this one. This is this is not the romance. This is not romance. Romance, romantic aesthetic. Even if let's say you don't know this, this is like some a a x a. I mean, I, I mean, just can you can just think about that? Kuch to hai. So some 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 idea. Understanding uh, romantic aesthetics is not a simple undertake, undertaking for reasons that are internal to the nature of the subject. Distinguished scholars such as Arthur Lovejoy, Northrop uh, Fry, and 
SIA Berlin have remarked on the notorious challenges facing any attempt to define uh, romanticism. Love, and then we are given an example. Lauja, for example, claimed that romanticism is a scandal of literary history and criticism. The main difficulty in studying the roman the romantics, according to him, is a lack of any single real entity or type of entity that the concept of uh, romanticism designates. There is no one thing that I can hold on. Lauja concluded that the word romantic uh, come to uh, mean so many things that by itself it means nothing. So what is, I, mean, I think that even if let's say, we, let's understand what the passage of time tells us. So we have got romantic aesthetics. Let's call it RA. I think this is very hard to de uh, de define. What is this? It is very hard to define. Why it is very hard to define is that there are a lot many ideas and we cannot boil down to sort of one idea. Therefore, it, if it means anything, it can mean nothing as well. So that's why, and then a few examples given in paragraph number one. Let's move to paragraph number two and see what the paragraph number two is saying. The more specific task of characterizing romantic aesthetics adds to these difficulties an air of paradox. Now we are saying there's a paradox. Conventionally, aesthetics refer to the theory concerning beauty and art a branch of uh, philosophy that studies these topics. Now, in romantic aesthetic, basically there are two words. There is romantic, there is aesthetic. Aesthetic is actually study of, uh, what is it? It is a study of beauty and art. Okay, so I think this is what, but what is this romanticism mean? However, many of the romantics rejected the identification of aesthetics with the circumscribed domain of human life that is separated from the practical and theoretical domains of life. The most characteristic romantic commitment is to the idea that the character of art and beauty and her engagement with them would shape all the aspects of human life. Being fundamental to human existence, beauty and art should be central ingredient not only in philosophical or artistic life but also in the lives of ordinary men and women. Okay, now what is the what is what is romantic saying? The romantic is basically saying that this whole thing about beauty is not GB restricted to art. It is every aspects of human life. It is not just for art. The beauty is there everywhere. Theoretical, practical, not just art and stuff. Beauty. There is romanticism in preparation of cat as well. In reading comprehensive passages, beauty is everywhere. And then it says, uh, uh, another challenge for any attempt to characterize romantic aesthetics. Now we have got challenge. So basically here so far we understood what the position of romanticism is, is that the beauty is ubiquitous. It is everywhere. It's not restricted to what of this. Then we get into one more challenge. The challenge is it is hard to define because there are many ideas. What is the next challenge that will be mentioned here? Another challenge for any attempt to characterize romantic aesthetics lies in the fact that most of the romantic uh, romantics were poets and artists whose views on art and beauty were at most part not found in developed uh, theoretical account but in fragments, aphorisms and poems which is often more elusive and suggestive than conclusive. Another challenge is that who are these romantics? Most of these romantics did not do a lot of theory stuff and all. Oh, most of them is about poems and stuff. Where is all poem, the poems are how will I learn? Why don't you write a book? But theory number one of beauty. Beauty is not skin deep. Beauty is everywhere. They did not do it. So, so A, there is many ideas. B, they, they did not write theory. They wrote some poems and stuff. So how do you expect us to sort of understand this? So that's what author is going. Okay. Nevertheless, so now, 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 nice, nice, nice. Author has moved again. Okay. Author has uh, talked about challenge number one here. Author has talked about challenge number two here. And then author is moving and saying that nevertheless, okay. In spite of these challenges, the task of character romantic aesthetics is neither impossible nor undesirable as numerous thinkers responding to Lovejoy's radical criticism have noted. Lovejoy and I scope. There are a lot of people saying that wait a minute, yeah. So it's a gali madde. Romant, uh, romant, uh, romantic ACM is possible to define. It is also desirable. It is good to define it. It is possible to define. Too bold, too kya bold. So other people are saying that, look, it is possible to define. Let's see. Uh, while warning against the reductive definition of romanticism, Berlin by, we have got Berlin by, Lau by is here. Look at the huh, Lau joy, Lau joy by, and Berlin by is saying that, hey, Lau by. Yeah. 
There was a romantic moment, and it's important to discover what it is. So make it generalized. Don't make it reductive. Don't try and find out a single idea that encounters everything. Make it totally generalized. Can't that? Recent attempt to characterize romanticism and to stress uh, stress its contemporary relevance follows this mark. Now, okay. Now we are getting into what? What is the recent attempt? Recent attempt. क्या कर रहे लोग? Okay. Instead of overlooking the undeniable differences between variety of romanticism of different nation, the Lauja had stressed such studies attempt to characterize romanticism not in terms of a single definition, a specific type, or a specific rate, but in terms of particular philosophical question and answer. You have got romantic idea one, romantic idea two, romantic idea two. Instead of focusing on sort of uh, a uh, single definition of particular type is concept there is a philosophical q and a question and concern a few quick questions okay while german british and french romantics are all considered the central protagonists in the following are the german ones oh we have got german people german uh, british french where are indians what are we doing hmm. german is a important one cuz germans germans are important okay why two reasons explain this focus two reason why germans are good okay first because it paved the way for other romanticism german started and every else picked it up okay nice second the aesthetic overlooked outlook that developed in germany roughly between 1796 and 8182 82, the period that correspond to the heyday what is known as early romanticism offers the most philosophical expression this is the most philosophical expression of romanticism since it is grounded in epistemological metaphysical ethical and political concern that german romantic is concerned in the aftermath of kant philosophy this is you can get some theoretical perspective here after kant so basically this is what the passage is let's say that i'm i'm sure that you would probably look at this passage and go i don't understand this particular passage but what is that matlab it's a kahani kya hai kuch to ek concept hai there is one concept पब्लिक उसको गाली दिया ये क्या है इतना सो मेनी आइडिया वॉट इज दिस है ना तो बेसिकली प्रॉब्लम क्या आइडिया कहां से आ गया ये दिस रोमांटिक पीपल दे सेइंग दैट इट इज नॉट आर्ट इट इज एवरीवेयर एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग फिर दूसरा चैलेंज ऑल दिस मोस्ट ऑफ देम इज राइटिंग पोएम्स दोस ऑफ यू हैव लुक्ड एट दैट आरसी पोएम्स इन दैट आरसी poem come you can't understand you remember how much of trauma poem used to uh, create us in our school days did we understand anything so metaphor simile what is the difference metaphor and simile metaphor and simile <laughs> simile smile mm -hmm. we know the problem then berlin by said wait like that yeah itna old baat ha to itna itna bhi nahi hai na to to is a specific definition kyun dhoond raha hai generalize lagna hai yaar Make it generalize. क्या है ना? At the end of the day, this is even though there are a lot many things, basically it's about philosophical concerns. That is very important, broad. तो उसमें से तो German को देख, है ना? German. एक तो the German people started it all. Second ना after Kant, Kant ने उसको कुछ किरा किया, Kant की Kant, and then they focused on all this theory. This is what the passage is saying. Let's look at the question. This is too tough to understand. How difficult are this question? Let's rate it on a scale of one to five in terms of easy to hard, and we'll use the beast uh, model to eliminate answer choices. I have put that in other video as well. But let's uh, quickly call it things that are broad generalization of what is mentioned in the passage, extreme positions, uh, alien ideas, side tracking, which means information is given picked from the particular passage but do, does not answer the specific question. Any tone mismatch that is there, okay. The main difficulty in studying romanticism is yeah, again a lot of uh, ideas, the thought of big, various ideas. Okay, now, now you have to be careful because here a lot of sidetrack may come in, but I'm sure that you can capture this. The absence of written accounts, 
बोल रहे हैं यार दे ओनली टॉक दे डोंट दे हैव नॉट रिटर्न देयर इज एब्सेंस ऑफ रिटर्न अकाउंट पर रोमांटिक पार्क दे हैव रिटर्न स्टफ बट द प्रॉब्लम इज दे आर रिटर्न पोएम्स इट इज नॉट द एब्सेंस ऑफ रिटर्न अकाउंट सो दिस इज द प्रॉब्लमेटिक पार्ट आई थिंक दिस इज एक्चुअली एलियन oh you can take the extreme alien put whatever you want and look at this the romantic poets is mentioned artist is mentioned this is uh, trying to side track that's a choice to try and trap you in by adding something that is not even mentioned the mentioned the particular passage lack of clear conceptual contours of the domain this makes sense this is almost like a pick me that's what the idea is elusive and suggestive nature of romantic essays look at that this is like nature is very elusive and very suggestive what is it i can't get a hold of it i think some of the people might look at this and go sir sir sir, sir wait a minute okay so this is elusive and suggestive elusive and suggestive absolute side track that is mentioned now here the issue question is asking what is the question asking which of the following is a main difficulty this is not talking about a difficulty is talking about the main difficulty what is the main difficulty what is a fundamental difficulty what is the main difficulty this is uh, uh we're talking about another challenge that you have uh uh so so you have the main difficulty is mentioned there is another challenge you you have to look at the question from here the author is trying to trap you The author is trying to trap you. Uh, the, sorry, the question setter is trying to trap you. We have got evil question setter trying to trap you in saying that look, I am going to put main difficulty, but I am going to put exact same in this. In most many cases, I will put the exact words. I will not even change elusive to something else. I'll not even say suggestive to something else. I'll put the exact word here. I know that some people will not read the question properly. The main difficulty is uh, is this. is is a lack of a single real entity those are the main difficulty the main tab is uh, uh, the, the, the error paradox add to these difficulty you got the main difficulty is mentioned is lack of clear concept contour and not this particular part this is another challenge controversial and scandalous ye kya hai scandalous controversial ye kahan se aa gaya absolutely alien to the discussion i think these two are easy to eliminate i don't know this, this is i'm sure that you can navigate this it's not very difficult to navigate this one uh this is just trying to do a side track uh, to try and uh, sort of uh, to, to, to capture you but i'm I on a scale of 1 to 5 we can put it at 2 it's sort of it's manageable it's not easy to hard scale 2 is okay i think this was manageable question number 2 according to romantics oh romantic hai kya hua hai you to very clear hai every aspect of human life mein hai pyar i'll not say pyar i'm saying beauty pyar kya hai romance wo wala romance nahi it's about beauty beauty is there everywhere i think this is like almost like a pick me permeates all aspect of human life philosophical and mundane even though this is a statement which looks extreme it is not extreme than what is given in the passage because the passage very uh, clearly saying uh uh they saying should tab all aspect of human life it is not extreme than the passage it is actually equal to the passage therefore this should be a an answer and i'm sure that other thing can be eliminated is primarily okay you you already have the word primarily so you you almost think that okay th there is a red flag that word i it's going to be a problem primarily concern of philosophers and artists rather than ordinary people they think they say the 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 romantic people will come but 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 they say they kya hai this is like this is like philosopher ka hai ordinary people and all na they don't it's all aspect of human like on widely considered to be irrelevant to the human existence there vapas 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 we have an absolute crime and the choices this is basically saying what will happen to the uh question setter that's what the author na na if you mark answer choice number 2 this is what the author will do ha should be confined to look at the word so negative confined to specific domain irrelevant negative so it's saying that there is a tone mismatch very very easy to pick up on a scale of 1 to 5 this will be like a easy peasy one and i'm sure that this will be something that you can easily nail let's go to question number 3 okay according to the passage recent studies on romanticism avoid a single uh, definition On the studies, because they, these referring to the recent studies. Now, 
I, I, look at what the question center is doing. I'm going to tell you there'll be a lot of side tracking. Okay. Now, this particular statement here, single definition, specific time or specific place is actually mentioned here. Single uh, single definition of... Uh, okay, this is actually mentioned here. This is very, 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 very. In terms of single definition, specific time or specific place. Okay. He says that according to the past recent studies, but what is recent studies? But in terms of... Uh, don't Not in terms of this... But, but but do in terms of particular philosophical questions and concerns. Okay. okay. Particular questions and concerns. So they're basically saying they prefer to focus on particular fundamental concerns. So you're basically looking at concerns is fine. Your only problem is, is fundamental is a good word. Particular philosophical concern is a key concerns. Fundamental would be key as a word. But I'm sure that this is fine. But look at the answer choices. Understand variety of romanticism renders a general analysis impossible. Dek. So now look at this now. They are actually saying that uh, they are actually saying that uh, uh, the, the, the numerous uh, numerous thinkers responding to criticism uh, is patiently saying that look, it is actually desirable. Whereas it is neither impo neither impossible. The word neither impossible nor desirable. And the recent attempt has basically said that not in terms of single definition, but in terms of broader ideas. So the word impossible make is that. Okay, now this is the sidetrack. Okay, now here is talking about Lovejoy's skepticism seek to discredit. I think there could be very, very uh, uh, this, this, it, it could be, a, this would be an answer choice that some of you would have fallen for. Okay, because discredit of Lovejoy skepticism is actually mentioned here. Numerous singer responding, uh, numerous singer responding Lovejoy's radical criticism have noted. One Berlin, uh, one against reduction uh, romanticism, uh, says sympathy. Berlin has a problem. Okay, now the question, question though, this is a, see this, this is a side track. The reason why it's a side track, the question is specifically asking about. This single definition, single time, which is sort of a closed option, narrowly focus on this particular part. This particular thing has got no connection to this, specifically what Berlin did. And by putting it here, the question set is trying to trap you. And I'm sure that there might be a lot many cases when people mark this. When you read for the first time, right, the passage, you definitely don't remember exactly where to place this. So this is probably one of those questions you want to so so so, so for, uh, go to the passage and search where this is. The moment you find the piece out, right, and then immediately next to that, you'll find automatic answer to the question. So that is the answer. But sometimes, you know, this this is sort of happens sometimes that people mark answer choice number three. Prefer to highlight highlight the paradox. Like highlight the paradox as a concept. Look, where is this come from? Another side track. Where is paradox? Somewhere else. This is a standard thing. That you've seen quite a lot in in cat. This is a standard thing, even even when let's say that uh, uh, we are creating questions. I'm creating so sort of mock question. This is a standard thing that all the question center does. So on a scale of one to five, uh, I'm I'm going to pick it about two point five ish. It's it, it's actually easy to eliminate sort of a few things, but because of a lot of side tracking that that has been used here. Uh, it's a lot of side tracking that has been mentioned here. It could be it possible that it renders into a little bit of confusion and they, therefore probably will have to go to the passage and sort of check it. It sort of may not be that easy uh, to answer this question in one shot. Okay. Uh, let's look at question number four. Which of the following statement is not supported by the passage? Okay. So which is, which is we have to basically identify the flaw. Okay. Recent studies on romanticism seek to refute the differences between national romanticism. Okay, now. So what is recent studies trying to do? They are refuting the difference between national romanticism. They are saying that romantics number one, romantics number two, romantics number two, the differences does not exist. There is no difference. Okay, now. This is sort of the, the questions that are here is, uh, is again being evil. It's like you make a, so this is, this is sort of a side tracking. Now you make you make you put stuff on the passage and do a little bit of mis misinterpretation. The, the word is to refute the differences. There is absolutely no difference whatsoever. Uh, but look at this. That is not saying that there is no difference whatsoever. The difference exists. But focus on a broader thing. He's saying that uh, instead of instead of overlooking the undeniable 
differences. The difference is undeniable. You can't deny it. They're not overlooking it. They're saying differences exist. They're acknowledging different uh, exist. Uh, uh, so he's saying that not, but between the difference of that Laoja had stressed, Laoja has stressed on the differences. Recent attempt is not denying the differences. But recent attempt is trying to say that, okay, don't attempt to capture romanticism on terms of something that is very specific. Because the difference exists, you look at in terms of philosophical questions and concern. So therefore, this is absolutely not support of the passage. And that's the case. So you essentially, you please understand that the, the, the problem is differences mentioned uh, here. So it's quite, I, I, I think if, if you're someone looking for a problem, right, you, you have to look for a problem, look for a problem. So basic idea is this. So if, let's say an answer choice, a collection of words. So you've got, let's say answer choice, uh, uh, answer choice is collection of words, right? Answer choice one, answer choice two, answer choice three. Let's say you have to try, find, try to find out something that is true based on the passage, right? Whatever is true based on the passage, has to be, every single element should be true. Now, the something that is false, wrong, can be this also, that every element is wrong. It can even be this. All elements are correct except one. So that makes it problematic. Here maybe like all elements are uh, correct except two. Even if that's there, you try and understand one faulty statement, which, which I'm going to call as a rotten word. That is enough for us to eliminate answer choice. So you're looking for a problem, looking for words. That kind of creates a problem, right? Here, um, here is not even asking the true statement. You're asking the statement which is not true. So identifying the problem. The problem here is them refuting it where the passage clearly says undeniable, okay? So there is the answer to the question. Let's look at another one. Characterizing romantic aesthetic is both possible and desirable. Yes, of course, is mentioned is, is neither impossible nor undesirable. So this is like a Negative statement, not desirable means it is desirable, not impossible means it is possible. So anyone answering this particular question is basically did not uh, look at the uh, double negative. So this is something that is mentioned in the passage. Many romantics rejected the idea of aesthetic as a dominant domain separate from other aspect of life. Absolutely, this is mentioned here. So I think if there is something that you might have an issue with is the word primarily here. You're also saying maybe this, this is a problematic case. Romantic aesthetics primarily expressed through fragments of aphorisms and poems. Okay. Now, primarily is mostly. Right? So, primarily can be looked at mostly. Thus, the passage talks about most. Right. He's saying that most of the romantics. So, given the fact that most is mentioned here, therefore, primarily in itself is not a wrong statement. So, and so therefore, it could be quite possible that people would have eliminated answer choice two and three very clearly, but there could have been a confusion between these two things. And therefore, you might probably will have to go back and check this. This may not be very, very uh, straightforward. You might look at the word primarily, and this requires a little bit of checking. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, grade of easy to set of hard, I'll probably do is about 2.5-ish. But overall, look at this, right? None of these questions require any in-depth understanding of the passage. None of it. The passage, even though let's go back and talk about the fact, the passage had a grade level which is very dense. Pick from one of the kind of uh, places where you and I would probably not spend time reading anything. I don't think that we'll get up on fine day. Let's read Stanford in secular philosophy because we are feeling bored. No. We might read this for cat passages. Even for cat passages, we'll rather read Aeon essays. Right? We'll not go to Stanford in secular philosophy and start reading the stuff. If you want ever see Stanford in secular philosophy, I'll show you how it looks like. Uh, this is, uh, let's say, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Plateau.stanford.edu is the link. Uh, there you go, plateau.stanford.edu. So I remember the link. So this is, it, let it come. I don't know why it's taking a lot sort of time. When, okay, there you go. Okay, let's just, so there are a lot of these uh, topics, right? So if you look at the table of content, uh, abduction, abduction, and aesthetic, there you go. Is aesthetic experience, there is romantic aesthetic. I'm sure that will be there on our uh, romantic aestheticism, reason, relativism, Reductant conclusion. Would you ever read all this? 
is not even there so magnetic asceticism somewhere else would be that you look look randomly when you look at uh, the something let's look at revolution itself a topic which is sort of uh, you will understand maybe very easy topic political revolution is transmitted the concept of revolution is just at below below i i don't think that even for your sort of a cat preparation you would have read this particular cat uh, so unless somebody gave it to you unless gave it somebody gave it to you that okay ye padho ye ek dose hai aaj ka tera padhne ka dose hai i have collected it for you i will collect it i will write it you read this one nobody is going to read this so this is a situation where you had a very very unlikely unless you encounter these kind of passages in mock test very unlikely that you have done uh you look at you look at sort of a topic you see words like romantic aesthetics but if you forget and say that just call it x it's x so what is the passage about you get a clean idea some people have an issue with x and x makes his particular claim that that x has, x is it it is all of capacity some other people there is now refuting that it's possible to define this x you just have to follow this particular path that's it there is one concept there are some people who think that that concept is very vague others are saying that look even if it's vague it's fine but there is a way in which we can navigate this one that's all the passages if you kind of understand so that level uh that broad level and i'm sure that you can answer main difficulty for sure you can answer this question for sure very easy ones maybe you might have little bit of so even if let's say this this also pretty easy it's like it's, if once you get this one you you will answer this this question straight if you catch this one answer this question straight so stop listening to people who say that just because the passage is stuff uh you should not you should leave the particular passage especially if you're preparing for cat 2024 you have a lot of time for your preparation don't start your preparation by making any assumption about your ability don't start telling yourself that mera aukaat nahi hai that is a problem don't let people say that you you you, you. i mean i mean that's all i will say right i'm not saying that you should solve all the 24 questions but i i will say this that you should not start by saying that i cannot solve 25 24 question that's all i'm saying. that that's all i'm saying right i hope this made sense cat 2023 slot number 3 the vrc passage on rational thinking this was find in three words the grade level uh, is 14.9 so we can consider it to, be, it to be dense passage uh, this is from the washington post on psychology that's a broad area we've got two detailed question two interpretation question there is no sort of global main idea question let's have a look at this particular passage and see what this is all about okay there you go let's start by reading what the passage is trying to say steven pinker's new book rationality what it is why it seems scarce why it matters offers a pragmatic dose of measured optimism presenting rationality as a fragile but achievable ideal in personal and civic life pinker's ambition to eliminate such a crucial topic offers a welcome prospect of a return to sanity it is no small achievement to make formal logic game theory statistic and bayesian reasoning delightful topic full of charm and relevance so so it's kind of looking like a review we got a pinker i'm just going to call p there's a book on uh, rationality and there is a broad overview this thing uh, about what the book is about that this is uh, is uh, pinker's view uh, this is fragile but, but it is achievable and the author is sitting and saying that at least author is happy that we have got a book which is a uh, practical pragmatic uh delightful and other seems to have a positive response of this particular book so far that's what we have understood let's move on to second paragraph it says it is also plausible to believe that a wider application of the rational tools he analyzes would improve the world in important ways his prime around statistics and scientific uncertainty is particularly timely and should be required reading before consuming any news about the covid pandemic more broadly argues that less media coverage of shocking but vanishingly rare events uh, he argued that less media coverage of shocking but valid rare event from shark attacks to adverse vaccine reaction would help prevent dangerous overreactions fatalism and the diversion uh, of finite resources away from solvable but less dramatic issues like malnutrition in the developing world so getting uh, more in terms of it is still author's view about what the book is about uh so author says that there is a wider application for it and one specific thing is author author is basically saying that so there is uh, 
the dramatic uh, news and not so dramatic ones. The not so dramatic one is equally important. The dramatic news get all the resources. So it is also important that we should look at all the not so dramatic one as well. So far, so good. A reasonable critique. It's a reasonable critique and Pinker is not the first to make it. But analyzing the political economy of journalism, its funding structure, ownership concentration, and increasing reliance on social media share would have given a fuller picture of why so much coverage is also is so misguided and what we um, um, uh, what we need to do about it. Now, at this point in time is where it's not a uh, criticism that we see. You, you can see this word, but so there's a pivot that is happening. Author is probably telling that probably we should have analyzed why is the journalist doing it? What are their funding structure? Why why are these dramatic uh, news so, so widely shared uh, in, 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 in journalism, in all the news? Why that happens? And probably that is where it's, it's sort of saying but prob probably some could have, I think I will not call it limitation. Let's call it limitation. The author is probably saying at this point in time, maybe you, you should have done a little more study in terms of why uh, the journalists or whatever political journalism is doing, putting putting so much of these kind of news so that would have given a better picture. Right? Pinker's main focus is sort of conscious, sequential reasoning that can be uh, that, that, that can track the uh, steps in a geometric proof or an argument in formal logic. Skill in this domain maps directly onto the navigation of many real-world problems. And Pinker shows how great mastery of tools of rationality can improve decision-making in medical, legal, financial, and many other contexts in which we must act uh, act on uncertain and shifting information. Now, we are getting back. So, so basically, so far what you've seen is uh, the author at this point in time talks about uh, what one aspect of the book is. So this is this is basically about uh, what uh, Pinker's book talks about and author's uh, uh, so sort of critique on that uh, the, uh, the idea. And author is saying there is sort of one limitation. In the same manner, we can see there's another feature. Uh, but uh, this another feature about the book is uh, the Pinker is uh, focusing on rationality, which is based on sort of sequential reasoning, methodical reasoning, that's what it talks about. And it's if the, the importance of methodical reasoning is what we mentioned in Pinker's book. Despite the undeniable power of, the, of sort of real rationality described, many of the deepest insight in the history of science, maths, and music strike the originated moment of epiphany. So now author is now getting back and saying author's view on the sequential reasoning. Author is saying that while this is fine, there are other types as well, which is... The, so the non-sequential reasoning. So there are other uh, uh, other kind of uh, discoveries that have happened, which is not based on a sequential reasoning. From the 19th century chemist Frederick August Kekul's discovery of structure of benzene to any of Mozart's symphonies, much extraordinary human achievement is not a product of conscious sequential reasoning. Now, author is now saying that while I understand what Pinker is saying, but uh, uh, wait a minute, but it's not say so. It's not a criticism. Uh, or, or, or there is, I'll use the word uh, sort of limitations, something that has not been explored by Pinker. That's what maybe you should look at this as well. That's what probably what the author is hinting at. Even Plato's uh, Socrates, who anticipated many of Pinker's points by nearly uh, 2005 years ago, showing the virtue of knowing what you know and examining all the premise argument, not uh, simply trusting author's authority in Charisma, attributed many of his most profound insights to dream and vision. So now he's talking about another example. Look, uh, you can look at uh, examples. There are a lot many examples that is mentioned from Mossad and a lot many things. And also even uh, uh, Socrates, when you look at Socrates, while Socrates agree, agree with Pinchin, uh, also Socrates has got a lot many stuff which is based on dream and non necessarily about sequential reasoning. Conscious reasoning is helpful in sorting the wheat from the chaff. But it would be interesting to consider the hidden aquifers that make much much of the grain uh, grow in the first place. And again, talking about yeah, Pinker by you talked about sequential reasoning, but but they can't make that. There are also non -sequ non sequential ones. Pinker by you talked about so the, these media are dramatic, but they can change. You should have probably uh, looked at why these people are doing it. So, uh -huh. Please, please. Uh, uh, nice. You wrote a good book. Uh, but little issues I have.
that's where I believe this passage is. The role of moral and ethical education in promoting rational behavior is also underexplored. There seems to be, author is now saying that what about moral ethics is underexplored in this book. Underexplored in this particular book. So far, it seems to be, author seems to be happy uh, here about the book. Suddenly we see that author is like, wait a minute, cribbing, cribbing. Change the tone immediately. <laughs> so initially he's saying, okay, it's nice, but but point one, you did not look into what the why the journal is doing it. Point number two, you are telling sequential reasoning is all very good, but look at other point three, you missed out on moral and ethical education. That you missed out. Pinker recognized that rationality is not just cognitive virtue but a moral one, but this profoundly important point. One subtly explored by ancient Greek philosophers like Plato and Aristotle doesn't really get developed. Oh, this is a shame. In possessing the right sort of moral character is arguably a precondition for using rationality in beneficial ways. If you're an immoral being and you're a very intelligent person, oh God, it's over. It's the sort of a... Uh, so author is talking about uh, some sort of a positives in this particular book and our author is now talking about uh, a few negatives and uh, three of them is what I can find. So there is also one here as well. So there are sort of three issues, underexplored things that the author is saying. So let's look at the question. Question number one, the author endorses Pinker's views on importance of logical reasoning as it is. Okay, now we're talking about what is the uh, endorsement that is being mentioned here. So one of the things that I mentioned in the previous video as well, if you watched it, is how do we identify flawed reasoning? Well, what is a flaw? What is a flaw means? There are information that is given in the particular passage. You have to blindly give follow the information. Anything is not aligned with the passage, not true, can be either direct contradictions, contradictions, which is exactly opposite to what is mentioned, or slight uh, misinterpretations or whatever i'll not call it right or misinterpretation of what is mentioned which can be uh, either uh, in 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 this uh, beast okay which means e either there is over generalization or there is something that is broad or an extreme position only always never primary and those kind of positions or something that is alien something that is not even discussed in the particular passage or maybe it could be side uh, tracking which means the question is asking something specific uh, endorses. Now, but that is probably uh, somewhere here, right? So that is where the endorsement is there. The answer has to be found in this particular paragraph. But a lot of things have been mentioned somewhere else. So it can uh, it can be, so the answer choice can be something which is, uh, which is information that is given in the passage, but does not answer the specific question. Or the last one being uh, something of a tone mismatch. So this is an approach that we can look at. And here, identifying flaw, identifying error is, is better. I, mean, I will not call it better. We are naturally predisposed to identify error. If, if you talk to someone, what are the good things about him? Okay. Tell me some bad thing about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait. I have got a list. So we are uh, sort of uh, predisposed to doing that. So that's uh, uh, how we will handle this question. Okay, let's go one by one. Uh, so here we, we're looking at, uh, the, the, obviously there'll be, we are looking at the answer to this question. Endorse the importance of logical. Why is logical reasoning important? One of the things that you would want to do is that, okay, let me go back and read the passage. But the, thing, the key is that you can eliminate. So now you're talking about help people get expertise in statistics. Is it, this is too narrow? Is author saying that, okay, public knows, they'll be able to understand statistics. Statistics is mentioned. But it's not connected to. So this is this is I see side tracking something that is mentioned in the particular passage, statistics and discipline mentioned, and this is wrongly connected to uh, the aspect of people gaining expertise. Nowhere in the passage is mentioned that because of logical reasoning, people will know statistics. That is not what is in, uh, mentioned. So it is it is it, it, it I think it is right here in this particular sentence. By the way, uh, he analyzes and would improve the world in important ways. Is a uh, uh, should require to consume before before about the, knowing about COVID pandemic. Uh, so those kind of things. It's not necessary that people will learn statistics. This is kind of trapping somebody. This is a usual trap. Uh, I, I'm sure that people who are sort of prepared for the uh, BRC section of the CAT would easily identify this particular trap. Focuses public attention on real issue like development rather than sensitive events. So look at, look at there is another side tracking. 
uh, side tracking. Would it help focus public attention on? So this census limit is mentioned, but it is anywhere in the passage, or they said that public na let the journalists do whatever the journalist wants to do. Let them put all dramatic events. Apna public na must hai. They will not fall for these cheap tactics by the journalists. No, we fall for it. We fall for it. It says that uh, dangerous overreactions happens. I think if you if, if you if less media coverage will prevent dangerous overreactions, more media coverage will have overreactions. Who is overreacting? The public is overreacting. So this particular thing is in the sense false and it is not answering the question. So this can be eliminated for that reason. Provide moral comment. Look at this moral. Look, look at where it's gone. It has gone to this particular part whether author has criticized that it is kind of underdeveloped. Again, another side tracking. But does not answer the question. The question is specifically asking about uh, this, this endorsement. And, and this is something that is underdeveloped. Uh, so, so answer to this question would be this: equips people with the ability to tackle challenging practical problems, and this is can be sort of understood from what is being mentioned here. I think uh, uh, here also offers a pragmatic, uh, rational tools analysis to improve the world in important ways, which is whatever the tool that he has. These are uh, statistics, scientific reasoning, uh, and so on and so forth. He argues that uh, as he said, reading before consuming any new for COVID pandemic. So this sort of is, is, is fine. I'm saying that uh, uh, there's undeniable power sort of rationality it describes. Uh, so you're saying you hear here, domain directly navigation in many real world problem. I think that is where uh, skill in this domain, real world problems, all that uh, so sort of uh, uh, gets to uh, this particular one here to answer choice number four. So on a scale of one to five, one being easy, five being really hard. I would probably put it as about two-ish. I mean, it's on the scale would be about two. It is. It, I'm, I'm, you can eliminate this. I'm, I'm sure that, that uh, you would be smart enough to uh, see through these uh, traps and the questions that it's trying to set and navigate to snap. Answer to this question would be answer choice number four. Let's look at question number two. Okay. The author mentioned the cool discovery on the structure of benzene in the Mozart symphonies to illustrate the point. What so this is this is called a specific purpose question. So the question is not about what this discovery this is trying to say, but the question is why did the author mention and usually the answer is right next to it. So author is basically start by making this claim that uh, that the originator is a mo moment of epiphany. It is not a product of conscious sequential reasoning, and and it based on that uh, is 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 basically this is given as an evidence. So this in argument evidence is called you know argument. No? So you are you are giving a set of reasons to justify a conclusion. The reason in argument is called premises, a premise. This is that's a word that is used. It's a premise, which is trying to arrive at this particular conclusion that many of the, the uh, uh, innovations in various fields is not a sequential reasoning. It is on based on dreams, visions, epiphany, stuff that happens. And, and, and therefore, the answer is great innovations across various fields can stem from flash of intuition and are not always propelled by logical thinking would be an accurate description of that reasoning. Okay. Now, let's look at the answer choices and remember our framework of beast, broad, extreme, alien, side racking and tone mismatch. Let's look at two. Pinker's conclusion on sequence reasoning are bleed by European achievements. It's like what a Dali idea in which in the past were more rooted in unconscious burst of genius. Look at this. It is essentially you can see it's a tone mismatch. A full Gali is open, happening. This is like Pinker's now. Pinker is author is going here. Pinker, Pinker boy is like a, what did it do? What did Pinker boy doing? Stupid Pinker boy. Stupidity. That's what is sense here. Like you can say the tone mismatch. Um, by European achievements, where are, we, where, where, where are we going to Europe? Why are we going to Europe? I think, I mean, where is this coming from? I think oh, you, are, you understand, okay. This is, this is I, 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 that's also not even mentioned. It's specifically European achievement, not Indian. European. 
And this is sort of, you can see a lot of these things. There's a tone mismatch, there's a sort of extreme position uh, rather than what is mentioned, a little, little bit of alien stuff being mentioned here. All that is, all that makes sense of choice too wrong. Let's look at three. Unlike the sciences, oh, now we are making comparison, look. Unnecessary comparison is uh, happening here. This, uh, this is already alien idea because no comparison has been made between sciences and human achievement. Unlike the uh, science achievement, human achievement in other fields. What is other field? Other field than sciences. Now, nah, look at this. Mozart. Not a scientific person at all. He is a... Sing. Gana banata hai. But ye kya benzene ring? What about this? Our mix of logical reasoning and spontaneous epiphanies, this is like wrong, this is wrong comparison. It is not just a creative arts, but also scientific fields that have benefited from clash of creative. Look at this. Now, this is like, this is the, this is not the point being made here. That, that just don't focus on creative art, okay? Science also is good, okay? Again, some comparison. So you can see that there is an alien comparison that is being made here in this particular passage. One other thing that the question setter can do is this. This is a sort of a setting a trap. Uh, creating nice side traps, uh, side trackings, or maybe uh, alienation idea. So, for example, let's assume that something is mentioned P somewhere, something is mentioned Q somewhere, and there is a literally no connection between P and Q. This is an independently mentioned idea. This is independently mentioned idea. Then I can create some wrong connections. Wrong connection can be something like P is a cause of Q, Q is a cause of P. So, this is like wrong causation. And wrong kind of P is better than Q. Or Q is better than P, a wrong comparison. There is sort of a lot many cases you can find this trap here, and that is a trap that is used in question number option number three and four. But I'm sure again I'm gonna put the, this on a scale of one to five, one being easy, five being hard. I'm I'm I'm, I'm putting it about two-ish, maybe about two point five is some people may fall for it, but I'm thinking about 1.52 is likely where I'm gonna place it, but I'm just gonna put it 2.5. For now, let's look at question number three. According to the author, for Pinker, as well as ancient Greek philosopher, rational thinking involves all of the following ex uh, except. Now, this is this is this is this is basically picking from here, right? This is an except question. We have to under uh, identify the flaw, right? So it's saying involves all the all all. It's talking about rational thinking involves. For both Pinker and uh, 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 and 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 the ancient philosophers, what is it? I think this is probably one of the questions uh, on a scale of one to five. I probably put it about four point five. Right? It's sort of when you look at this, uh, look at sort of statements like these. You look at this statement here, which says even Plato, uh, uh, Socrates, and then he says who anticipated many of the Pinker's points by nearly 2,500 years ago, showing the vir virtue of knowing what you know and exa examining all the premises uh, 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 arguments and not simply trusting speaker's charisma, attributed many of his most profound insight to dream and vision. So there is an agreement plus also disagreement. And here, for example, you have that uh, the, the moral ethical education is underdeveloped, but Pinker recognizes that Rationality is not just a cognitive but a moral one. Explored by Greek philosophers like Plato and Aristotle, but so both of them agree to it. It is just that it is underexplored. I believe that this the issue with respect to this particular question is that because of sort of these uh, in between all this, the, the, there is this uh, 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 the, 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 really uh, doesn't really get developed. You might have an interpretation that which is why you could you could you could probably look at answer choice number two and some people may be falling for this. Believe the ability to reason logically encompass ethical and moral di di dimension. Both of them have acknowledged this. It is, uh, for example, if you look at Pinker as well as uh, uh, ancient Greek philosophers, PG, uh, uh, Pinker says yes to this particular statement. They are promoting a uh, 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 Pinker recognizes that uh, it's not just cognitive but a moral one. This is explored by Greek philosophers like Plato. Both of them agree to this. Okay, so we are looking at something that is not okay. So this is okay. Arriving at independent conclusion irrespective of who is presenting the argument. Okay, now he's saying that arriving at uh, uh, independent conclusion, not trusting the speaker under the authority of charisma, definitely for the Greek uh, uh, sort of philosophers. Pinker may sort of it's not explicitly stated here. They're saying that. Uh, 
So many of Pinker's points, nearly uh, the, the, this is many of Pinker's point, and 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 then saying this, look, they anticipated many of the point, including showing virtue, showing this, showing that, and showing this as well. So one can sort of infer that this is also a Pinker's point. So you would say yes to that as well. And four says awareness of underlying assumptions in an argument and gaps in one's knowledge. It is mentioned. Uh, examining premises and, and premises in arguments, examining all premises in an argument. So all premises in an argument, which means that all the evidences, so looking at everything, including uh, uh, assumptions in one way, are un, uh, assumptions are unstated premises, right, in one way. So so this is, this is true, given the fact that this is many of Pinker's point, these two are fine. So you actually have to Sort of navigate these three ones based on based on sort of a few things that is mentioned, and now we get to the answer that is uh, that is here: the primacy of conscious uh, learning. So the conscious sequence learning as the basis for similar human achievement. So now the conscious uh, sequence learning as a basis of similar uh, human achievement is is something that uh, 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 what is it? Pinker will say yes to is also something that they also acknowledged. They also acknowledge it. But the key here, the key here is the word primacy. What does primacy mean? Primacy means the number one position. For Pinker is definitely a number one position. Conscious, uh, conscious sequence is number one position. But unfortunately for a Greek philosopher, it is not a number one position. It's an important thing, but it's not the primary position because they say that they attribute many of his most profound insight in dream and vision. So there is a disagreement there which says that they would say that it's not the number one position. It's an important position, which is why this is answer choice number one. Given the fact that this requires... So when, when you, for example, read the passage for the first time, you don't get into these this much of in-depth analysis the first time that you read. So for every single thing that you remember that, okay, this is mentioned, this is mentioned, this is mentioned, this is mentioned, that mentioned, I probably will have to go check. Where is this mentioned? Where is that mentioned? This question requires a lot of back and forth uh, in, in terms of engaging with the text once again. So this is, I will call a speed breaker question. It is very, 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 it is quite possible that if uh, students might get confused with this particular question and go to the passage and come back to the passage, waste a lot of time. A sensible thing to do when you have things like this is to make the decision that, look, probably it's too much of investment for me. I, I'm getting confused. Let me just leave this question, let it be, and move on to the next one. In, in the VRC section of the CAD, there are 24 questions. It's like you're fighting 24 battles. And and you don't you have to win the war, which is like doing well in this particular section. So instead of getting bogged down by one small small war, you can you can leave this and say that I'm going to pick up something else. This is what allows people to do more number of questions, evaluate more number of passages. Many of you are not able to go beyond two passages, and most of you can't can't go beyond three passages, which is fine. But those of you cannot go beyond two passages, the reason why why that happens, you get stuck in questions like these. You've decided that I want to solve this question. You decided I'm going to, going to solve only two passages. So you want to solve every single question. So if you want to save some time, you can do that. Move on. Otherwise, I'm, I'm sure that for those of you sort of uh, kind of smart enough uh, to look at the word, uh, look at a beast approach, if if, 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 if if you're very, very careful of this, you know the word primacy is extreme. And then automatically that particular word is giving a red flag. And that should be sort of enough for a lot of people to say, sir, your primacy my lafda hai. Okay. Uh, this is primacy important. I'm, I'm going to think a bit. So probably give a clue and mark answer choice number one, but I'm just going to keep it around uh, four-ish in terms of uh, level of difficulty on a scale of one to five, one being easy, five being really hard. Let's look at uh, the next question. The author uh, uh, refers to Greek philosophers too. So again, this is a specific function question. What is the role of Greek philosophers uh, in this uh, sort of discussion? Where is the Greek philosophers mentioned? So here, one of the mistakes that people could do is sort of mentioning here Socrates that is mentioned here, that the Greek philosopher is actually mentioned here. right? So I, I, I think that getting into Greek philosophers here 
would be something that uh, so you know the Socrates, you are assuming it's Greek philosophy, but uh, the author refers to ancient ancient Greek philosophy. The question is very very specifically asking about ancient Greek philosophers. You have ancient Greek philosophers there. So as a question setter, I know that some of you will think it's wrongly referring to this particular part about not a product of conscious uh, sequence of reasoning. And I can I can give the answer choices, create a sidetrack to it and then make not many people fall for the trap while the question is uh and and but the real thing is about the 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 the, the moral one the moral ed ethical education uh that is being really underdeveloped doesn't get really developed that's the point that needs to be said and you can actually see that in answer choice number three reveals gaps in pinker's discussion of the importance of ethical consideration there's a gap in pinker's discussion for the author says that there is a gap because underdeveloped in uh, important ethical consideration of behavior, right? So now we have, uh, 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 so you have, you have, you have, for example, look at this, for example, answer choice number four, which is a, which is a side track, show how dreams and visions look at there. So they, they, they know the questions that are known was that I'm going to trap. And it's, uh, nah, nah, nah. Socrates, Socrates, dreams and visions, dreams and visions. Oh, questions at the nose, questions at the nose, what is doing? We have got question setter who is Lucifer C77. Questions that are trying to trap you, and I'm sure that many of you would have fallen for this particular trap, unfortunately, but the question is referring to something else. Look at it. Okay. Highlight the influence of their thinking on development. Okay, look, see, see, Eric. Their thinking on the development of Pinker's argument. You know where this question is speaking from? This part. Uh, who anticipated? Who anticipated Pinker's point? Uh, do some few years ago. Uska one twisted version is this. Highlight the influence of their thinking on the development of Pinker's argument. Pinker ne na Greek philosopher ka funda leke likha hai book. That is what one is suggesting. But it's sort of a twisted version of this. Two reasons, of course, there's a side tracking because because uh, the answer is not uh, the, from this particular paragraph. The answer, the answer to the question is here. This is what is being referred to. One is side tracking. Second of all, it's sort of suggesting that just because they anticipated uh, Pinker's point nearly 2,500 years ago, basically they anticipated it, though they sort of had discussed the idea. It is not correct to say that Pinker ne uska churaya. So this is, so this is sort of a problem. Indicate the various similarities yet today uh, between the thing. So similarities are any similarities bold rahe, but purpose in order to do what? This is in order to do what? In order to Pinker ko gali dene ke liye bola. Gali nahi. Saying that it's developed, getting developed. So you look at this. It's like a positive thing. When you know that at this point in time, author has tone is slightly negative. I'm not I'm using the word loosely negative. The tone is different there. So these are eliminated. I think this would be, again, I think about, given the fact that uh, this is ancient Greek philosopher potential to mistake it for here. I'm going to put it about 3.5 to 4. So this, so this particular passage has questions which are likely that some of you would have made mistakes uh, but if you look at uh, the kind of option that is being said is a standard beast mode uh, would have helped you navigate this one but yeah but I'm sure that I'll not be surprised if some of you fell for some of these traps and, and got some did not get the marks that you should have got from this particular passage I hope this made sense CAT 2023, slot number three, BRC, RC passage on climate crisis origins. This particular passage is about final 11 words, not that dense, 11.9, so manageable. There are multiple uh, sources where I found this uh, particular article to be taken from, I think. Uh, so So this is one of the source. You can call it environmental humanities, impact on uh, environment on... Uh, so looking at it's not so very sciencey passage it's more in terms of uh, the humanities aspect of it how how it all started what created the problem it's not uh, so much in terms of a natural science passage in the sense you had a couple of detailed questions couple of interpretation questions let's give it a go and look at the passage here and this is kind of a review also i think more in terms of a, a review of, of a particular book 
there's a, there's a nut the nutberg curse uh, by ghosts uh, that's basically the passage is kind of a review as well so let's give it a go and see what the passage is trying to tell us all right the biggest challenge the nutberg curse by ghosts throws down is, uh, is to the prevailing understanding of when the climate crisis started most of us have accepted that it started with the widespread use of coal at the beginning of the industrial age in the 18th century and worsened it with uh, worsened with the mass adoption of oil and uh, natural gas in the 20th century so it's basically saying that we have got a uh, uh, origin of uh, climate crisis and we believe our belief our belief is is that it started somewhere in the 18th century and probably started in the 20th century and this is probably been questioned by the nutberg curse by mr gosh i think this is probably what the passage is uh, trying to hint at okay gosh takes his history at least 3 centuries back the start of european colonialism in the 15th century so according to gosh this is this basically not the case actually started in the 15th century during colonialism he starts the book with a 1621 massacre of dutch invaders determined to impose a monopoly on nutberg cultivation and trade in the banda islands in the in today's indonesia not only do dutch systematically depopulate the islands through genocide they also try their best to bring nutberg cultivation into plantation mode these two points to which goes returns to examples from around the world one how european colonists decimated not only indigenous population but also indigenous understanding of the relation between humans and earth to uh, how this was an invasion not only on humans but on earth itself and how this continues to the present day by looking at the nature as a resource to exploit now this is sort of the perspective that is be bringing in in paragraph number 2 is it is sort of the colonialism and sort of specific i think it's talking about why the book was called the nutberg uh, curse it is basically uh, called because of the story of Uh, what happened in indonesia and it's talking about basically saying that uh, indigenous people not only were destroyed their understanding were destroyed and the whole idea is that earth is something that we can exploit and those uh, colonial mindset is something that is there even today that is basically what is happening it's not about what coal did it's not about in this age it is about certain uh, the mindset that was there and said the destruction that happened by the colonialists to destroy and create the crisis that we see today that is the origin of the climate crisis is what mr gosh is alleging we know we are facing more frequent and more severe heat waves storms floods droughts and wildfire due to climate change we know our expansion through deforestation dam building and canal cutting in short terraforming the world uh, world uh, gosh uses has brought us repeated disasters are these the responses of an angry gaia who has finally had enough i think probably it'll be earth oh yeah i think this is a sort of a mythological figure i'm guessing earth is like ah ho gaya earth is earth is uh, sitting and saying this is earth is sitting and saying that i have had enough i'm going to give storm all the things that you're doing i'm going to respond to it <laughs> by using the word curse in the title the author makes it clear that he thinks so earth has had enough we explored earth and earth is reacting that is what we see the author makes it clear i use the pronoun who knowingly because gosh has quoted many non european sources to inquire into the relationship between humans and world to around whom so that he can question the prevalent way of looking at earth as an in, in, inert object to be exploited to the maximum i i think one of the thing is that there is a way in which you look at earth uh is it is, is it inert doesn't have any life doesn't have any life and that is what the perception that we have today but in reality once upon a time that was not the case the indigenous people had understanding had a relationship with earth they were the most sacred now it's like well, we'll do whatever you want to do i mean and very interestingly this is the word uh, who uh the earth i think this will probably refer to earth i think is basically saying that for the author at least author agrees with it and and for gosh this has has a personhood it it is it's sort of a living thing you can say in one of figurative sense not inert as go to uh, goes uh, text notes and bibliography show once more that none of this is new there have been uh, cha- always been challenges 
to the way European colonists looked into other civilization and on Earth. It is just that the invaders and their myriad backers in the field of economics, politics, anthropology, philosophy, literature, technology, physics, chemistry, biology have dominated global literature. It's about European. This European people, evil. Evil European people is looking at looking at want to dominate, want to kill, and there is just it's like they're looking at Earth as something that needs to be exploited. Poor Earth is sitting and going that exploit the Earth. That's what is being said. That's the mindset. There are other points of view that we hear today if we listen hard enough. These observe uh, the those observing clim global climate negotiation know about the Latin American way of looking at Earth as mother. So look at Latin America. We call Earth mother. Latin Americans call Earth mother. Is their mother? There are people who can listen. If you if you if you listen to it, you can hear it as well. But you don't. These Europeans are sitting and saying that look, they said they're employed. Listen to Latin Americans. They also know how such a framing is just provided, uh, just provided lift service and ignored in the substantial portions of negotiation. In the Nutbox Curse, Ghost explains why. He shows the extent of the vested interest in oil economy, not only for oil exporting countries, but also for superpowers like the US that control oil drilling, oil prices and oil movement around the world. Many of us know power utilities are sabotaging and decentralized solar power generation today because it hits the revenues and control. And how the other points of view are often overlooked. Now he's saying that, look, now it's also get, getting the oil economy. So there are a lot of people who want to keep the power of oil and manipulate whatever they want to do and ignoring things like renewable energy sources, for instance, sabotaging uh, solar uh, power generation, other things. is basically saying, so what is the origin? Then the passage is talking about the origin. The origin is not what you think. The origin is not about coal. Don't blame the coal. Let's go back and look at what these colonial, uh, colonists did, what they did to a uh, certain ideology that people had, indigenous people had, the relationship they had with Earth. That has all changed. They don't consider Earth as a person. They results exploit. And this is not, what is happening now is not new. European colonies, this is that in the past. Look at Latin Americans. You can, you can listen to their pain. That they are considering them to Mother Earth. Like, nah, we want oil. We'll pick it up. We'll do whatever we want. Solar, what I'll show though. My God. You can, and then you can, you can, you can, you can sort of sense the absolute sense of that emoji in the passage. Let's see if we can navigate the question without that emoji. All of the following can be inferred from the reviewer's discussion. The reviewer obviously mean the, the person who wrote this particular passage, except inferred treated as something that is true based on the information given in the passage, except means we are trying to find a flaw, which means which is not true based on the passage. And I have uh, said this in the previous videos as well. We're going to treat it either these are absolute contradiction or manipulation of the data that is given in the particular passage in this framework of beast, with whether it is a broad generalization that is being made a position that is extreme than one in the passage, alien ideas that is given, this is not part of the passage, or side tracking, which is the uh, question setter's favorite option. The question is something that is very specific, but other information can be presented as a choice which does not answer the question, or a mismatch on tone. Right, so let's look at each one. We're looking at what the flow is, what the reviewers uh, discussion network. The history of climate change is deeply intertwined with history of colonialism. Absolutely agreeable. There is no two ways about it. This is absolutely true based on the passage. The contemporary dominant perception of nature and the environment was put in place in the process of colonialism. Absolutely there. I think these are straightforward ones. These are true statement. B, this is not the case. Academic discourses have always... I think this is enough. Always serve to function, raising awareness. <laughs> so look at look at the, the, the extreme. Eh? Look at the tone itself. So positive when the entire passage is about negative things. That has to be our answer. Let's look at four. Environmental preservation policy makers can learn a lot from non-European. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Learn from them. They treat Earth as mother. 
माँ है माँ नॉट लाइक इट्स 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 लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म Absolutely. On a scale of one to five, one being easy, five being hard, we're going to place it at absolute number one. This is an easy peasy one. Let's look at question number two. Which of the following best explain the primary purpose? Now you're looking at a specific function of the discussion of the colonialism of the Banda Islands with the Nutburgers. So what is the purpose? This question is asking why did the author bring this? Not the what. So this is going to be a sidetrack might be there, but some answer choices which can defend the word, but the question is not asking the what. The question is asking why, 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 why was it given? This the start of colonialism is in the 15th century. It start with this uh, uh, examples. These are the two points. Uh, it's, it's saying, but and how this continues to the present day, looking at the nature of exploit. This uh, how this in which not only humans are, how this continues the present day. All these, all these are the purpose in which it was given. Okay, let's look at answer choices. See if there is any sort of evil answer choice here. Is the question that are being evil? Let's have a look at answer choice number one. It says to illustrate the first instance in history when the process responsible for climate change was initiated. And I'm basically sure there might be uh, somebody who would who would, who would look at this answer choice, but this is an absolute sidetrack. While okay, the 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 colonial the 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 history the history of this climate crisis starts back in 15th century author has not presented this banda island issue as being the first one uske pehle na nothing happened this banda mein problem hua so this the banda island being the first instance sort of being is extreme right that is a side tracking one whether this this uh, the issue that is happening in banda islands was the first instance that is a problem no oh, in general the start happened somewhere in the 15th century but not necessarily the starting point was this this was given as an example for a larger point author wants to raise which is why this cannot be the answer to our question let's look at answer choice number 2 to illustrate the role played by cultivation of certain crops in plantation mode so look at this side tracking right this is look at this this is talking about what is basic issue within this but the question is not asking what happened in banda islands the question is asking what is the purpose as to why this was part of the discussion so oh, this is you can guarantee that in questions like this specific function question there will be one answer choices which will side track like this is gives you something that happened here which is a true statement but the question is not asking what happened in banda island the question is asking why is that particular example the part of this conversation that the author is having here so this is not the answer to a question to illustrate how systemic systemic violence against colonies constitute cornerstone the point is not about it's that happened again look at the side tracking that is happening here the violence is mentioned violence happened but is the passage about the violence is a discussion about violence in colonialism no the discussion is absolutely about this what is illustration what is illustration means example now all these answer choice is saying look what is being illustrated to illustrate how is this is used in example what is the conclusion that is being drawn the conclusion absolute answer choice number one says of colonialism represented and perpetuated the mindset that has led to climate change there you go absolutely this is that point answer to this question is this i know that at this point in time somebody would easily fall for this trap but the seasoned rc taker i'm sure somebody who has prepared understands the traps would have basically said for them will be probably a two ish maximum but if you don't know these things you might even go to a 4 4.5 because because if you don't know these traps then then that's a different story but otherwise i would probably treat this uh, level of difficulty being a too easy one okay one being easy five being hard two is where i put it on the base of information in the passage which of the following is not a reason for the failure of policies seeking to address climate change why did climate change fail 
lot of things uh, mentioned. So we're looking at which is not the reason. So something that is not aligned with the passage, you are identifying the flaw. Identify the flaw is very easy. We are going to be in the beast mode. We'll identify the beast, which is that one thing this is not mentioned. The greed of organization benefiting from non real energy resources. Yes, that is greed. Vested interest in oil economy. Uh, the oil exporting countries. Ah, nah, 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 nah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. The decentless characteristic of renewable energy. Malab Gali is for renewable solar power. Solar power is the reason. It's not, look at this word. It is not a decentralized characteristic that's a problem. It is not the recentless. So look, 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 look at this. This is the absolute side tracking that is happening. De decentralized solar power generation. Okay. But is that decentralization the pro problem? In fact, it's exactly the opposite. Sa sa sabotaging the decent less power, killing the decent less power today, killing the power, killing the solar power is a problem. This is wrongly suggesting that the 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 the, the decent less power of solar power is a problem. No, killing that power is a problem. Attacking this power is a problem. This power is not the problem. Solar power is not the problem. Killing solar power is a problem. Therefore, answer to our question has to be this one. There is flawed one. These are the questions that are being really ah, evil, evil, evil. So these are the kind of cases when you know that stuff is mentioned. This is exactly mentioned in the particular passage. But what is the question asking? Failure uh, the reason. And which one is not a part of it? It's about sabot sabotaging it. Uh, that's the whole thing. And I, yeah. The global dominance of oil economies, absolutely, there is no problem. This is a, this is a true statement. So we'll eliminate that point. We'll eliminate this. The marginalized status of non European base of looking at nature and environment, absolutely true. The marginalized status, we are marginalized at Latin American way. We're marginalizing it. Gaya, Gaya, mother. Marginalization of it is definitely a reason. As for this question, has to be answered choice number two, on a scale of one to five, one being is saying five being out, because of this sort of side tracking that some of you might fall for this, so I'm just going to put it about three-ish. Okay. So, question number four, which of the following, if true, would make the reviewer's choice of the pronoun who inappropriate? Okay. Okay. So, now the question is, who cumula? So, now you're looking at, okay, they have you missed who. Uh, so for Earth. Okay, why was it place used for Earth? Because there are a lot of indigenous culture regarded this as a living organism. Now he's saying that you have to change author's mind. So you're looking at and so one way to look at it, something that is absolutely against what is what is mentioned in the passage, right? If you have to make the the make whatever the passage has said inappropriate, the answer choice has to be something opposite what is mentioned in the passage. Known European societies have perceived Earth as a non-living source of all resources. There you go. A non-living source means non-European society also has a colonial mindset. The colonial, everybody has the same mindset. Latin American thought, uh, say that it's about Earth mother. No, that is not the case. So it goes against that idea, no? And it goes against the idea, which is why this would be inappropriate. Let's speak and eliminate. Modern Western science discovers new evidence for the Earth being inanimate object. Modern Western science. See, first of all, author has given Gali to the West anyways. Whether West will further, the author has said there is, a, there is let's say, European and non-European. For European, Earth is like non-living. For non-European, Earth has got life. Now, what is answer choice number A saying? Acha, non-European believe that does not have life. So, so, so that can, what is this saying? Modern person discovered new evidence that Earth is inanimate. There are more people giving evidence to this. So, author has already given Gali to them. Already given more Gali, author will give, but author will still continue to call Earth who. So, this is not helping. Ghosh book has a different title. Nansbury, he hey, can. The only reason why I called it. Uh, who is because there is a curse. If the revenge, now revenge man, there is no who. Who will take re revenge against who? Revenge is natural. Revenge is inanimate. Curse is better. What has got this not to do with? And I'm sure that there might be somebody who will look at the answer choice and go, oh, looks very intelligent. 
sir i feel like marking it i think it is very intelligent no nothing intelligent as a choice there is a direct cause effect relationship between human activity and global climate change if it is direct cause effect relationship it is aligned with the passage not aligned with the passage you are looking at something that is not aligned with the passage because you you want to find something inappropriate which we dash should not be aligned with the passage and so it, it should be as a choice number 1 again on a scale of 1 to 5 i'll probably put it as 2 it is an easy one all the four can be managed in this particular passage and i hope this made sense to you So this is Cat 2023 slot number three, a passage on archaeology paradox. The passage had five hundred and four words. The flesh skin get grade level is fourteen point nine. That tells us that this passage was a bit dense to read. It was picked from the Los Angeles Times on the area of subject is cultural heritage. We did not find any questions that ask about the main idea. There were one detailed questions and three questions, which is in the interpretation or inference questions. All right, so let's give it a go and look at what the passage is trying to say. One of the things that you notice here is that it seems very long because there are too many paragraphs. You know what happens when there are too many paragraphs? You have to also these blah blah spaces also gets created, uh, and therefore pushing it. In fact, the paragraph size is uh, not; it's just five hundred four words. It doesn't look five hundred four, but it is only five hundred four words. All right, so let's look at what the paragraph is trying to say. Try and uh, get the key idea of each of this particular pa paragraph and make sense of what the paragraph is trying to tell us. So let's start with paragraph number one. In two thousand and six, the Met Art Museum in the U.S. agreed to return the Euphronios crater. All right, a masterpiece Greek urn that had been the museum drawn. Since nineteen seventy two, in two thousand seven, Getty Art Museum in the U S agreed to return forty objects to Italy, including a marble Aphrodite in the midst of looting scandals. And in December, so the South Bay's and a private owner agreed to return an ancient Khmer statue of a warrior pulled down from the ocean two years before to Cambodia. Basically, we are going to say the people are returning stuff. Uh, so I am just going to call it stuff. The people are returning uh, to, to the original uh, so sort of source. All these uh, 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 archaeological stuff is being returned back. Go ahead, next. Cultural property or patrimony laws limit the transfer of cultural property outside the source uh, country's territory, including outright export prohibition and national ownership laws. Most art historians. Archaeologists and museum officials and policymakers portray cultural property laws in particular, in general, as in invaluable tools for counteracting the ugly legacy of Western cultural imperialism. So now we are getting into specific about we have got so a cultural property law. What does that mean? So there is a source country, which means a country where they found the the body of an artifact, some something they found. And basically, what he's saying is, you're not supposed to send it outside. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. You cannot send it outside. It, if if it belongs to your country, you keep it with you. You can't take it outside. That's what the law says. And it's also saying that it is. It is. So some people like it. There are people. There are people who are going say that they they like this particular thing. They love it. They like it. Why do they like it? Because it's counteracting the ugly Western cultural imperialism. So this whole idea is counteracting that. So nice, nice. So far, so good. Where is it going? During the late 19th and 20th of century, uh, an era of uh, former Met director Thomas Hoving called the age of piracy. American and European art museum acquired antiquities by hook, by cord, or by crook from grave robbers or souvenir collectors, bounty from digs and ancient sites in improvised but art-rich source countries. Patrimony laws were intended to protect future archaeological discoveries against Western imperialistic design, and then it, the basically the third paragraph is sort of doubling down on what these guys were doing. These guys were these guys were doing by hook or crook, some of getting it, looting it, taking it back. Basically, we have got this law which protects that. Come on. I'm not going to give it anywhere. I'm not going to give it to you anymore. You get lost. So so far so good. All right. So I oh I like this. So immediately when I start looking at I, we can see that here is where our author is getting involved. I don't know whether author is angry about it or sad about it, but at least author is getting in, involved here. So this is going to be interesting. 
I surveyed 90 countries with one or more archaeological sites on UNESCO's World Heritage uh, Site list. And my study shows that in most cases, the number of discovered sites diminishes sharply after a country passes a cultural property law. Now, one thing that you got to understand is that therefore, you see that all of these so far is being mentioned here is the initial context. This, this is sort of the context that, uh, uh, that author is given. Now, this is where the author's perspective is there. I think this particular part which says that in most cases, the number of discovered sites diminishes sharply after a country passes a cultural property law. What that tells me is that once this law is done, the discovery has come down. Why? So basically, people, it cannot go outside, but people have stopped discovering things. What's going on here? There are 220, 22, uh, sorry, 222 ar archaeological sites listed for those 90 countries. When you look into the history of the sites, you see that all but 21 were discovered before the passage of uh, culture, uh, culture property laws. After the passage, only 21 were discover discovered out of the 222, which is roughly about 10%. Well, I think I think this is this is I think sort of a key thing already in this particular passage, and and I guess it is still going on. The passage is still going on, so very likely author is going to explain the reason as to why this is happening. So we have identified uh, this particular thing as identify a problem. So identification of problem happens, and then we kind of understand this is the idea, and this particular part is going to be key uh, of this particular uh, passage. Let's move on and see strict. Culture patrimony, patrimony laws are popular in most countries. But okay, the downside may be that they reduce incentives for foreign governments, non-government organizations, and education institutes to invest in overseas exploration because their efforts will not necessarily be rewarded by opportunity to hold, display, and study what is uncovered. Oh, there you go. We have got, I think in number paragraph number five, we have got the reason as to why that has happened. What is CPL doing? CPL is doing is a nothing. I can go outside. That is not allowed. So somebody is standing here in the source country is saying that if I come here, what is it for me? These people are saying that I have no incentive to participate and help you discover these things for you. I, I, what, I don't get anything in return. All right. To the extent the source country can fund their own archaeological project, artifacts and sites may still be discovered. Paisa hai. So basically saying that this, people who with a lot of money, life is okay. They, they, they don't need outside help. I've got money. I'll do, I, I'll, I'll do my stuff. But the problem is, uh, is that uh, the survey has, uh, the, uh, the survey has far reaching implica uh, implication. It suggests that source countries, particularly in the developing world. Now, what happened if you have a source country, which is like, I don't have money. My pocket is khali. I have got nothing. What to do? And then I've got a CPL, which say that, Nothing can go outside. People are not coming and helping me because they are not interested. I don't have money. So whatever, what I'm going to discover, I'll say, I'm going to chill. You don't take, I will not take, I will just chill. That's what is happening here. He says that uh, particular level can show, should, um, and now he's saying that, it suggests the source can be particular level but should, and author is now saying should narrow their cultural property laws. Now, author is giving a solution to this particular problem, especially for these countries, which does not have money. Author has given a solution. I think this is another important thing that we, we need to understand. The problem is identified, which is after this law, discoveries is reduced. And the author has given explanation. And author has now given a solution. What is the solution? Please reduce your not strict matrak. Don't keep it strict. So that they can reap the benefit of new archaeology discovery, which typically increase tourism and enhance cultural pride. So if you discover town things, cultural pride, people will come, so you'll make some money out of it. So, so there are benefits. This does not mean that these nations should abolish the restriction on foreign excavation and foreign claims to artifact. So I'm saying that. Uh, this does not mean these nations should abolish the restriction. Not completely, but reduce to reduce it little bit, please. But if you don't have money, and you have got a strong such a law. No, 
reduce the law a bit, reduce the restriction a bit, don't abolish it completely, reduce it so that people can come. Okay, China provides an interesting alternative. Now we have got China. So basically, author is saying that, okay, now of all this, I'm going to give a China story. What has China done? For some reason, author likes China. We as Indians, we don't like this, but it's okay. It's a RC passage. We have to read. We have to understand. China provides an interesting alternative approach to source nation eager to for eager for foreign archaeological investment. Uh, so there are China saying that if you're outside of my country, oh, come here, come here. I am going to call you. Please come, please come. come. You are most welcome. Come, come, come. What have they done? Okay. Uh, all right. From 1935 to 2003, China had has a, a restrictive culture property law that prohibited foreign ownership of Chinese cultural artifact in those years. China's most significant archaeology discovery occurred, occurred by chance in 1974 when peasant farmers accidentally uncovered ranks of buried terracotta warriors which are a part of Emperor Quinn's spectacular tomb system. By accident they found. In 2003, the Chinese government switched course, dropping the cultural property law. They removed this tropical cultural property law and embracing collaboration. They embrace collaboration. Come here, Please, we will work together and get this sorted out. A British collaborative international archaeology research. Since then, China has nominated 11 archaeology sites for inclusion in the World Heritage Site List, including eight in 2013, the most ever in China. So if you read the particular passage, so initially the author starts by a particular context. People are returning stuff. So this is uh, kind of this context is mentioned, uh, which is like, See, there, there is there is a history where Western imperialists came and looted stuff, and now you're saying that they took all the stuff that we had. I know we know we know the story of Kohinoor diamond. We know that story. We know so many things have looted from our country. They've taken it back. Now, if you have created something, we're not going to give it to anyone. So we've got law. Nice so far. That quantity is established. Now, author identifies. Look, there is a problem. What is the problem after this uh, uh, thing? Discoveries are less. I think the key idea would be here, and then author has given a solution to it. Usko thoda kam kar do. That is the basic passage. Let's look at each of these questions and understand what the answer choice is trying to do. One other thing that I'm going to use here, those of you who have watched my videos or seen my lessons, I use this uh, idea of beast to eliminate answer choices, which means if something is true based on the particular passage. And, and you are trying to un understand the flaw. It is very easy to identify a problem. Identifying error is a particular problem. How do you identify error? Either there is outright contradiction or it is cannot be determined. I don't have any information to answer this question. These could be, for example, ideas that are broader, much more generalized than what is mentioned in the passage. Sometimes the option is too extreme. Always, never, uh, only, and such kind of thing. Sometimes alien stuff are added to the particular passage, which means it's not even mentioned the passage. And this is very interesting. This is known as site tracking or site stepping. What that means is this, a site track is this. You've got a particular question. Let's assume this particular question is asking something specific from this particular paragraph. Therefore, answer has to be there. But you've got a lot many stuff up in everywhere else. So I will give an information that is mentioned in the particular passage or twist it around, but does not answer the question. And the last, but not the least, is a tone mismatch. If the author has not given Gali in the passage, the option cannot give Gali. So identifying flaw is crucial. So let's start with question number one. Which of the following statement, if true, would undermine, which is weaken, the central idea of this particular passage. So one of the first things that you got to understand is what was the central idea of this particular passage. So, so therefore, even though this particular passage did not ask any global question, what this question is indirectly asking whether you understood the central idea of the particular passage. We understood the central idea of the particular passage. For those, when the CPL uh, is uh, introduced, this, this uh, culture property law is introduced, Discoveries are less. Or jiske paas paisa nahi hai, wo to gaya. Especially those people, countries which does not have money. Why? Because people from outside is not coming. So now what you have to do is we have to identify a problem. Something that weakens it. 
So anything that is aligned with the passage cannot be the answer. Anything that opposes something that is given in the passage, that would be the answer to this particular question. Affluent archaeologically rich, so you're talking about rich source countries, that countries that has got money can afford to carry out their own excavations. This is actually true. When it's in the passage, if you got money, then you don't have any problem. We just understood that. This is uh, not our answer because we are trying to understand the flaw. UNESCO finances archaeology research in poor but archaeologically rich countries. Somebody is researching what is what is going on. The passage is saying that people are, there is no incentive for people to come and put in a fund to help this country without with, uh, with no money because they don't get anything. This is uh, this particular thing is questioning it. That is as, as the reason as to why two is our answer to this particular question. The passage is saying bar se koi help nahi hai. There is no help. Option say hey. So museum established in economically deprived archaeological resource countries can display the antiquities discovered there. Now this is this is sort of uh, the author is trying to trap you. Because he's saying that can display the... Is the issue with displaying? First of all, the whole issue is first you have to discover. Then only you can display. It's, the question is, the whole passage is not about displaying. Where do I display? It is about you're not able to discover stuff in the first place. So this is not sort of the answer to, to that question because it is doing nothing to the key uh, central idea of this particular passage. Western countries will have to apologize to countries for looting, what, 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 it has got nothing to do with the central idea than Western country. But it, it's, it's a part of the story. This kind of thing is sort of the sidetrack. And uh, whether that uh, apologize or not, is author, author has said, don't apologize. Sir. Don't apologize. Nothing of the sort is even mentioned. This is not even touched upon in the particular passage. So this is irrelevant. Our answer to this question would be answer choice number two. I will regard this question would be, let's say, if you, if, you, if you look at a scale of 1 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 being easy and 5 being very hard. And I think this particular thing, we will we'll probably put it about 1.5-ish. Great. So it, it, it is something that people should have done, people would have got, would have got correct. Uh, even though, let's say that you did not sort of understand the central idea. <coughs> uh, even, let's say, for, for some reason, you did not understand central idea. You can align with this particular passage. You can definitely say that this is a faulty thing. This goes against what the passage is mentioned. Therefore, it's obviously going to attack what the passage is trying to say. So, and answer choice number four is addressing something alien. Answer choice number two is uh, addressing an issue which is not an issue, which is non-issue. Display is not the problem. Discovery is a problem. So, if you can, if you could have done that, then you can answer answer choice number two as answer. Let's go look at question number two. It can be inferred. Don't worry about this inferred, inferred, and all. It's, it's at the end of the day, it is. Uh, which of the following is true? From the passage that the archaeological sites are considered important by some source countries because now this is a very close uh, question. This this is sort of a question. Archaeological sites are considered important by some source country. Immediately you suddenly remember, I don't remember reading this. Which country is finding this important? Which source country found find where in the passage the author has mentioned about any source country? Source country is feeling about what they feel about this article. Said author is giving the author's own perspective. Now, immediately, so without going back to the past, there are certain things that we can eliminate. For example, the uh, the source country. Okay, imagine we have got a source country. We are thinking about that poor source country who does not want to give anything outside because once upon a time there were all these imperial people, all these sort of devils was looting stuff here so they don't like them so they, they, they said that this is this sort of the story and now we can see answer choice number two which says are a symbol of western imperialism my god <laughs> this should not be the answer to that question okay and and sort of you can also look at our subject see this this is this is the see western imperialism is mentioned this is this is a clear side tracking. The author is uh, questions that they try to trap you into marking that answer choice are subject to strict part, uh, patrimony laws. This is discussed, but this has nothing to do with why somebody finds the archaeological sites important because there is law. The reason so it could, could be other way around, right? Uh, the so so it could be so it could be that uh, it which which is the reason. I cannot say because there is a, a strict laws, 
I love the sides. I think this this order is problematic. I think very likely going to happen is because I love love the site, I have the strict law. So this again, uh, sort of very very tricky to pick it up. The question setter is in fact being trying to being uh, very evil question setter we have trying to trap you here. I say that they're going to pick, they're going to trap you with this particular thing. So this this sort of the trap that is mentioned, I think it's very, very likely that people would have fell for the trap. And then you're getting into tourism sector. I think that we mentioned somewhere, generate funds for future discoveries. Now this is where you have to probably go back to the passive hunt. And there is one thing that is mentioned here. It suggests that the source countries, particularly in the developing uh, world, would uh, narrow their cultural property so that they can reap benefits of new archaeological discoveries, which typically increase uh, tourism and enhance cultural pride. So this will typically increase tourism and enhance cultural pride. Therefore, one can say some of the source countries may believe that it could give a boost to the tourism sector. And, and nothing is mentioned about this future discovery. It will generate fund for future discovery. If I discover something, I will get money for future. From where will you get money? So this is uh, this kind of crazy. So this is out of over a scale of one to five, one being easy and five being really hard. I'm going to keep it about 3.5-ish. 3, 3.5 is what I'm going to keep. Uh, it, it's not that it's difficult to pick, but then it's sort of a sort of crazy question. Another thing, that is, you, you've got an entire passage of 500 words. You can ask about China. You can ask about uh, this particular part. You can probably ask about uh, something about uh, this law. You can ask about of this particular part and why did you decide that that the question i'm just looking at the question why did you decide that i will test on this small thing uh inconsequential not a key idea of the particular passage but yeah this question number two is tested so this is probably a question which will also be a complete speed breaker you i think that if there are students students will think that come back me after answer every single question you're probably going to waste time in this particular question what what uh, sensible thing a, a good thing to do is maybe you can just skip it and if you have time later on then you can come back and solve this kind of question okay right let's look at question number three from the passage we can infer the author is likely to advise poor what is author's advice to the poor but archaeology, we need authors' advice to the poor countries. This capacity, we don't have any money. Author has given already given advice. You reduce your CPL. <laughs> Incentivize others to come to your country. Okay. Uh, uh, each of the following except. So this except question, which means we are trying to find a flaw. Something that is not aligned with the author. All right. So what should the poor countries do? What should what should you, what does the author uh, tell to the poor country? Answer choice number one here is saying, fund institutes in other countries. Fund, fund institutes in other country. You don't have money. There is no money. You are going to fund some other country. I think I think I think the question setter is trying to strap someone which is very lazy reader. It is it, probably what the, what is said the correct answer. This is get 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 fund from other countries. So this is saying that this this, this asking this is like some people read these uh, questions very fast, right? And that the questions that it knows that people are going to read that fast. So the questions that is trying to trap you, all the lazy readers or the quick fast they want to do stuff fast. Usko they do the questions were trying to trap. Obviously, this is this is clearly the problem. That'll be the answer. Funds institute other countries to undertake archaeological exploration. The source country you fund, poor poor people should fund. When cut, cutting edge techniques, so this is gone. I think everything else author would be so this would be answered to the question because the except question author will agree with everything. Allow foreign countries to analyze and exhibit. Let them then let them come. You reduce. Let them come. Help. Let them help. This author will say find ways to motivate other countries to finance. Yes, let other people help you. Take help from others. Reduce your law. Adopt China's strategy. Yeah, look at China. So nice China is. Okay. So all these are the okay. Answer choice in this case would be answer choice number two. I would consider on a scale of one to five. One being easy, five being hard. I'm just going to put this as one. Well, this is something that you should have got it right. Question number four. Which of the following statement best express the paradox of pat? What is the paradox of the law? Paradox is what? While it's supposed to help, discovery is low. I think if you just caught that, you'll get this. They were aimed at protecting cultural property. That part is fine. 
but instead of instead reduce new archaeological discoveries so there you go that is answer to the question it is quite possible that people would have got confused with answer choice number four it is possible right if you miss the central idea then it's possible so these two are easily eliminated uh, they were aimed to protect cultural property, but instead reduce business for it reduced business for auctioneers like it can't say It is like randomly putting it. This is the site tracking easily put something that was somewhere else, just deliberately put it here, and this is wrong. They were intended to protect cultural property, okay, but instead resulted in the withholding of national treasure from from museum. Withholding, I it's saying that I have got it. I will not give it to museum. Museum I will not keep. I will keep it in my house. I will not give it to... There's no quarrel with museum. They were intended to protect culture, but it's a result in neglect of historical site. Now, some people may pick this one up and say that, okay, sir, neglect historical site is possible, but this is the answer. There is no neglect of historical sites. They have to find the site, no? They have to discover the site. After that, you neglect. The problem is they don't know the site only. There is a neglect. It is not neglect of historical site. There is not neglect. It is, it is, it, that is not the case. I think that is a sort of a rotten word. I will probably put about, I think it's, it's fine. One to about five, about 2.5-ish. So it's sort of moderate one. So out of this, that you should have got all these uh, sort of answers correct. I think that's what I feel. It's not very difficult. If you get a central idea, unless and until you fell for some trap by the question center, all these questions were actually crackable. There you go. That is the solution to this particular passage from CAT 2023 slot number three.